in a television studio shows Phil Hartman and Chris Farley sitting in chairs. Hartman. Hello, I'm Hill Hartman, and welcome to this year's ninth installment of SNL's Crazy Critics, where one of our in-house critics critiques the last SNL episode. Joining us for this installment is Conrad Farlington, a former video store clerk who has encyclopedic knowledge of In Living Color, as well as a working man knowledge of SNL. Welcome, Conrad. Farley. Hey, Hill. This episode of SNL as they always are, was extremely insensitive. Hartman, let's start with the cold open. What did you think? Farley, first of all, as good as James Austin Johnson is at impersonating him, they need to stop having Donald Trump in their cold opens. He is a threat to democracy. Giving him airtime and letting his character get laughs is only going to make him stronger. Again, our democracy is at stake. Hartman, but he's not going away. He just won the Iowa caucus. Farley, it's a huge problem. I just don't see why SNL has to be a part of it. They should just focus on Joe Biden and all the wonderful things he's done instead. Hartman, now that's funny. Anyway, what did you think of Jacob Elordi's monologue? Farley, I thought it was fine. But I didn't like how when Sarah Sherman was introduced to the audience, that she didn't get a huge enough ovation. And that they gave Bowen a much larger ovation. I know he's a gay person of color, but he's still a man. And men shouldn't be getting larger ovations than women in 2024. It's only going to serve to keep the wealth gap gaping open. Hartman, I don't see the connection to the wealth gap there, but anyway... What did you think of the first sketch after the monologue, Crown Your Short King? Farley. This sketch was completely insensitive to short people. It was basically guilty of dwarfism. Hartman. Dwarfism? Farley. Yes, dwarfism. Insensitivity to people of short stature. Having Chloe choose Jacob over the short kings was a completely huge macroaggression against short people. Short people, just like all disadvantaged people, deserve respect. Hartman, I hardly feel short people deserve respect, but anyway, what did you think of the video sketch, Club Shay Shay Extended Cut? Farley, as an in living color aficionado, I cringe when SNL delves into people of color's culture. What Cat Williams says about other people of color is his business and shouldn't be satirized by a show that exudes white privilege. Hartman. But SNL has plenty of black people on the cast and in the writer's room. Barley. Be that as it may, it's still not exactly in living color, and they should be leaving people of color alone. Hartman. Okay, how about the next sketch, Lip Readers? Farley. This sketch was culturally insensitive and macro-aggrieved lip-synkers. Hartman. Oh, come on! Now lip-synkers are a protected class? Farley mouthed something without any sound. Hartman. I'm sorry I didn't catch that. Farley. Exactly! Only lip-synkers know what I said, and they know I have their back, even if SNL doesn't. Hartman. Uh, Okay, what did you think of the next sketch... Bowling pins. Farley. While it was a funny sketch, why was Jacob bowling with Heidi instead of a person of color? They have Ego and Punky on the cast. This was a lost opportunity for diversity. Harmon. Oh, come on. White people can't date each other anymore? Farley. Not if you don't want to throw around microaggressions against people of color. Haven't you seen a commercial lately? Couples need to be diversified. Hartman. Okay, what did you think of the video sketch, Alaska Airlines ad? Farley. This fake ad was a major macroaggression against certain people of color, particularly the Inuit people of Alaska. Hartman. Who the hell are the Inuit people? Farley. The Inuit people are what white people used to racistly refer to as Eskimos. Anyway, they make up a significant percentage of Alaska's population and play an important role in its culture and economy. 
Therefore, any knock on Alaska is a knock on those people of color. Hartman. <sighs> okay, how about Renee Rapp's musical performance? Farley. She did a great job and has a great voice. And although Renee identifies as bisexual and is a woman, her last name being Rapp is a microaggression against people of color. Having a white person with the last name Rap is cultural appropriation of people of color's music. Hartman. It's not a stage name. It's her actual last name. Farley. Well, she should have chosen a stage name that wasn't offensive to people of color's musical heritage. Hartman. Uh, what did you think of Weekend Update? Farley. I didn't like that there were jokes leveled against President Biden as he is our only hope against our democracy being threatened. But I appreciated that Shay had two people of color come out on the desk doing characters. Devin Walker is Tim Scott, and Punky is Dia Reddit. But I didn't like that Colin Jost is still involved, as he proved himself to being a racist by reacting to Devin's racist dog whistle. Harvin. Okay, and what did you think of the next sketch, Women's AA meeting. Farley. The premise for this sketch was completely insensitive and a macro aggression against women. It presumed that women couldn't have a women's only AA meeting without it being compromised because the women went gaga over a man. Hartman. It was just a joke. You know it's a comedy show, right? Farley. You should be able to make comedy without setting women back a hundred years. Those characters in that sketch seemed like they'd be willing to throw away their right to vote by Jacob's character merely batting his eyes at them. And that's a threat to democracy. Hartman. Everything's a threat to democracy now. Anyway, after Renee Rapp's second performance, where she was introduced by Rachel McAdams, what did you think of the sketch acting class? Farley. Although I liked the Rachel McAdams cameo, this sketch was insensitive against people trying to get work as actors. Hartman, so what? Farley, so what? Are you serious? Out-of-work actors are a protected class of people, and a threat to them is a threat to democracy. Hartman, okay, now that's a stretch even for you. Anyway, what did you think of the final sketch of the evening, Garrett from Hinge Wedding? Farley. While it's great that Bowen has a recurring character in Garrett from Hinge, the character sets back people of color as being unhinged and unable to deal with rejection. And that is a threat to democracy. And dead from the earth, we're not alive. It's Saturday, not alive, starring John Belushi, Chris Farley, Phil Hartman, Jan Hooks, Norm MacDonald, Gilda Radner, Donitra Vance, and with many other special deceased contributors, musical guest and host, Robert Conrad. Everybody, Robert Conrad. Applause, applause, applause. Shows Conrad on stage who says, Thank you, thank you. I was a film and television actor, singer, and stuntman. I'm perhaps best known for my role in the television series The Wild Wild West, playing the sophisticated Secret Service agent James T. West. I portrayed World War II ace Pappy Boynton in the television series Baba Ba Black Sheep, later syndicated as Black Sheep Squadron. In addition to acting, I was a singer and recorded several pop rock songs in the late 50s and early 60s. And I hosted Saturday Night Live in its seventh season. And in the cold open, I played a judge at People's Court where Robin Duke's character was a wannabe prostitute who was a plaintiff suing Eddie Murphy's character, Velvet Jones, the defendant, for false advertising for a book he wrote titled, I Want to Be a Ho because she was not able to get work as a prostitute despite reading the book. I found for the defendant, Velvet Jones, saying that the plaintiff was a pig, USDA pork on the hoof, major sow. 
However, I always kind of regretted that decision, calling Robin Duke's character a pig. Gilda Radner is a prostitute, and Norm MacDonald appear on stage behind podiums. Conrad, hey, you two, what's this about? Radner, this is the people's court, right? Conrad, no, I was just explaining that I played a people's court judge on SNL. Radner, yeah, whatever. Anyway, I'm suing this asswipe over here. McDonald waves at Conrad. Conrad, okay, what seems to be the problem? Radner, this charlatan over here, Cotton Smith, wrote a book about how to no longer be a hoe. I spent $20 on it, and it did nothing. I'm still turning tricks. McDonald, your honor. Conrad, I'm not actually a judge. McDonald, regardless, this lady of the night clearly didn't follow the book's instructions, you know. The first chapter talks about getting off your addiction to drugs. This lady here clearly didn't do that. Her nose is bleeding right now. Radner puts Kleenex up her nose and says, No, nah, Your Honor, this is false advertising. Conrad, well, I'm not going to make the same wrong decision again, plaintiff. I'm fighting for you for false advertising, and I'm ordering the defendant to help you to no longer be a whore. McDonald turns to Radner and says, I have an idea. Why don't you have sex with me, and I just won't pay you? And then you'll no longer be a dirty whore. You'll just be a dirty slut. Radner, sounds like a plan. Thank you, Judge. Conrad, glad I could help. Folks, we have a great show tonight. I'm here, so get ready to hear my song, Bye Bye Baby. We'll be right back. 